So, willkommen zurück hier auf der Lichtung des RC3. Okay, welcome back to the X-Hein, X-Space. The talk we have next is the talk um, working together or acting together. So, we have Felix hier in Berlin. Friedrichshain Kreuzberg und einmal in Brandenburg, direkt um die Ecke. Ähm, falls and Katharina Peranek. So, if you have questions to the following talk, please use Twitter or Mastodon, or ideally using the hashtag RC3XHAIN, X-H-A-I-N, or use the IRC channel where it will be connected, collected, then we can answer them. Without further ado, the stage is yours. Thank you very much. So I would begin. I'm very happy to be here today. And I want to talk about, uh, I'm happy to talk about the topic, acting together, digital volunteering in the city and on in the countryside. So the two of you are working and operating in the countryside and in the city, and that's very special. So we have a foundation in Neustrelitz, and we want to help with that. It's relatively new. We exist for one and a half years now, and one year ago, I was, allowed, I was able to talk with Daniel here, and we were freshly baked, so to say, and it became more stabilized. We were a foundation that's a collaboration of three ministries, and so voluntary work is very important for the government, and they spend a lot of money on this, so we can create structures for the uh, to support the around 30 million people and 30 million euro. So 30 million people, 30 million euro. You can calculate that it's not much money for each one, and we are looking for levers. And with those two speakers, I think we found partners who live it every day with their voluntary work and volunteer work. I don't know how much, how many hours you work per month, and we'll get to that, I guess. But some words to the foundation, about the foundation. Our job is to support voluntary work, be it sports, uh, sport clubs or uh, firefighters everywhere in the country. But what is important for us as well, and what was uh, included in our Charta as well, is work with, so we are working with 2,500 organizations and we were helping them with digitization. And some very nice projects were created and we want to create, uh, continue with that. And we want to talk about what is necessary for the future, not only programs, but also what can we do for more digital volunteering and for the digital public? How can we create a framework for that? And I want to, and we would like to see your perspectives and maybe there's differences, maybe there's commonalities. So Felix, what made you create the x -Hein. You're in the middle of Berlin, and Berlin is a weak region as well. So maybe tell us what your target was and your goal was with this. You will maybe be surprised, but the original reason for creating x was very egotistical. I wanted to learn all the cool stuff that I couldn't do. 3D printing, learning a new programming language, and I am completely unable to learn alone at home. YouTube 
books, not my thing. I learn by doing. And in that moment I thought, okay, well, then I need a space where I can go and where other people can assemble who know how to do all this cool stuff. And it didn't exist in that moment. Not in my area at least, so I decided to just open one. So I learned a lot of stuff. I didn't learn another programming language, but a lot of other things. But I also realized quickly that I'm not the only one who prefers to not learn things alone at home, but a lot of people really are looking for a space where they have the option to talk or maybe find machines that they don't have at home or are not allowed to use because it's too loud or too much dirt. And I realized that if you take care and you really try, you can reach a lot of people and make those people very happy. And if you can make people happy because they can do things that you wanted them to do there, then that's very satisfying. And for me, that's most of my free time to take care of the Exxon. It's five and a half years now, half a few hundred members now, grew up to 200 square meters, expanded to the house next door. And we are thinking, well, maybe we... We could need, we could use a lot, a, a bit more space. So there is a real need for this opportunity to work artistically, technologically, and exchange opinions. And yeah, we are in the middle of Berlin, but there is no, not that many great places for this. And that was the way why I'm still working on this and why I really don't want to think about stopping. Yeah, that's a great example for what voluntary work can do. Just do th something because you want to learn something, to create something. And the uh, few hundred members you have, that also shows that there is a need. But what role, if I can ask the question, is the topic voluntary work and honorary work? You said you spend a lot of time in this space, but what about the others? I read that you have mentors. Are those volunteers as well? Do they start projects? Yes. So everything is done by volunteers. Right now we don't have one person who gets paid. Everyone does it in their free time. So the whole space without volunteers would not be possible. Yes, there is people here who spend more time than others and they also welcome others and take it upon themselves to do this and also make it easier, take them, take their fear of new people. So if some someone doesn't like being there, they're eased into it. And we oriented ourselves with the chaos um, mentors called Chaos Parten and Chaos Partinnen. And yeah, we provide them introduction because if you don't take care of your newbies and yeah, if you don't welcome them, then you die quickly as a community. That's very important. And as I mentioned, nobody gets paid, so it's all voluntary work. Yeah, and uh, voluntary work and where I come from with the mentors and a Godfathers is the direct translation for the German term. It was great. And Daniel, you are not in a million people city, so you created the Havel Lab as a club. What was your motivation? Well, our reasoning was similar. Well, similar to Felix at least. So we came out here in 2011 and before that for I spent 15 years in similar cities. Berlin was the last and there was always a club or something. Erfa uh, is the German term for the chaos clubs. 
And then there were already always meetings, but out here there was nothing and I was really missing it. In Fürstenberg, I like living here, but that was the only downside, that such a place didn't exist. So nothing where people who were sharing my interests could meet. So there was this intrinsic motivation for me to create something like that myself and for myself. But also around me, for other people, no such offers existed. For young people, and I um, was very engaged in Chaos Mix School, and I noticed that right here, uh, out here, the reality is quite different when compared to the maybe more modern or hip schools in Berlin or in a city where there is more offers for young people. And like that, it was quite natural for us that we said we want to create this place also for young people so they can enter and it, it fulfills a need. And also it's all volunteer work. So last year we had someone who got paid from, uh, by the government, but she also returned to freedom and is now working, volunteer, doing volunteer work at the Congress. She's on the other side of the camera now. But yeah, it's all about volunteer work and that's a nice thing about it. I really like it because that also means that people here, they have a different motivation, they have different goals. There's nobody here who, who just does their job, enters in the morning because they get paid and they have to be here. But people who are here, who help here, also with completely crazy projects or new ideas that we have, everyone is here because they want to be. And that's a completely different kind of work. Yeah, all of that sounds great, but I know how it is with motivation. There, is prob there are problems as well. What would you say your challenges are? Would you say there are differences? What you are doing is quite similar, but you do it in different places, in different areas. So what are your challenges? A lot of great uh, big clubs, they have bigger problems to recruit, for example. So they have a lot of bureaucracy as well. So you have two different kinds of organization, but you have challenges as well. Or is it finances? Because you can get uh, government money. So maybe let's talk about this situation as well. Yeah, maybe let me shortly comment. One of our challenges is finding people. I put a lot of thought into how do I measure the success of our initiative. We uh, gave ourselves a schedule of three years to see whether it's worth it um, keeping up this place and investing all this work. And then we asked ourselves, how do we measure the value? What kind of KPIs can you use? And because our sponsors, of course, want to have KPIs, like, for example, how many young people visit our place. And here in the rural areas, there's not many young people, so it's complicated for young people to reach us. And for those who do visit us, this was exactly the space they were missing. We have young people here who have their own key for the place and who visit at least once a week. And then, well, they have their parents um, get them to the place by car because they live in a tiny village where there's no stimulation otherwise. So for those young people, this offer is extremely valuable and it makes a huge difference in their lives, or at least that's what I hope. And at the same time, 
In the medium term, you have to look into how this continues. And we put a strong focus on cooperation with schools. We have three um, school groups where kids can come to us after school, and it's all primary students, so between third and sixth uh, Great. So, in the medium term, I think that there will be a larger target group for our place and that this will continue to develop and grow in a way that I couldn't even plan if I tried to. So this is the one side, and on the other hand, everything that is related to bureaucracy is always difficult. I'm not a, I'm not a paper tiger. I hate paperwork. Um, I hate spending time on paperwork that I could use for useful activism and volunteerism. And I, unfortunately, I haven't found anyone who would be willing to take those tasks from me. So far, we don't, haven't found anyone, so that's a struggle. So, Felix, what are your challenges? And how did you, you overcome them? Yeah, we also have a people problem. Maybe not in the same way as in Fürstenberg, that there's a lack of people. And they're glad to have like five people turn up regularly. It's more about because here we have something like a hobby room, like a hobby basement, and all of us win their bread elsewhere, so it's difficult to organize regular workshops. That's really challenging. And also the administrative overhead, of course, is large. I'm happy that we have two people to tackle these tasks at the moment, so I don't have to do it all alone. I think that's the classical problem of any kind of volunteer cheering or activism on limited space. It would be easier to have workshops for a school if you had more space. But even though we have 200 square meters on two different floors, we still lack the space to have a whole school class come over. So we have more of um, spatial restrictions than Daniel probably has in the rural areas. And still, um, the kids that come to us also spend more than half an hour to get to us because you have the same problem in the city, basically. And also, it's difficult to attain space because it's expensive here in Berlin, here in uh, Friedrichshain, which is a very central quarter of Berlin, and we couldn't move because we have to pay our rent, and we are paid by sponsors, and we also have to reach a set number of workshops in order to finance ourselves, and of course we're we need donations, and to pay for a new location in Berlin, that would be, that is the biggest challenge we see at the moment. Otherwise, yeah, we would need more workshops to get more people to our place and make them happy. And of course, coronavirus, the situation is very difficult for us. Maybe let me jump in here. There might have been a misunderstanding. We do have regular offers where we have between 20 and 25 young people who come once a week reliably. And in addition to that, we also have school class classes that wasn't possible during coronavirus, but we also had classes at a camping site or somewhere else outside. So this isn't really a problem that we don't have enough people. 
but the metrics just differ in the countryside because they, there's just less people who live there. About the rent, what Felix mentioned, one thing is very important. Something that we're missing is structural funding. It's really easy, it's comparatively easy to get funding. Like, for example, I tell them I have this new project and this idea, then it's very easy to acquire funding because many organizations want to fund new things, but it's really difficult to get regular funding and long-term funding. And this isn't just in our um, sector, but it's all across the volunteering in Germany and we really have to reflect on whether this is not something that our society should wish for, that not just football, but also other um, societal activities should be funded publicly. And to have a structural funding that would be really, really important to us. So it's not about funding 100 new things, but to have structural funding in the long term. Yeah, we also, as a foundation, we are still bound to yearly budgets. This is not our own invention, it's just like that, but we have um, structural funding in our um, basic guidelines. This is something we want to do. So as a follow-up question, we want to build structures that have a broad target Group. But maybe this is something we can think about together, how to achieve that, because the coalition agreement also says that activism and volunteerism should be should be supported and promoted. So we need good structural funding. What we do is we invest in restoration of buildings and also we invest in things that work, like your spaces. And we want to do we want to do structural funding. And we would like to have others also um, in, get involved there. There's not just state funding, but there's also um, funding by uh, the local communities. And so just as a question to you, your district, your uh, communal district, it does, do they support you? No, we haven't applied for funding from the district. We have um, funding for organizations, for associations um, locally, but it's not much. It just barely covers our fixed cost. And we just kept that as a backup option. If we really need it, it would be like the ace in our sleeve. But it's really complicated to file for this kind of funding. And you can't start certain projects before they, they've received approval. And this is why we haven't used that option or have, haven't tapped into those funds yet. But it's clear to us that this place has an additional value. We just wanted to create this place independently, so we didn't, so we don't have to discuss and um, 
do all of the application filing and bureaucracy. So we just wanted to get into it um, and dive right in, get started, um, and then later see how to acquire more um, government funding. Yeah, it's similar for us. We don't get any money from our community or our uh, municipality. And we are, um, and yeah, at the beginning, I did it as a business, and just from 2019, it's a non-profit, and at the beginning, it, there was no option of funding. And I didn't dare to, uh, ask for money, because during the first lockdown, every contact to the city of Berlin was not very nice. Yeah, so we were amongst the first to produce face shields and masks, and we tried everything to access the state administration to maybe get some money to do more and to do it faster, but for weeks we were just ignored. So until finally we got an answer and that was, yeah, you want to sell masks? What is it supposed to cost? And we said, no, we don't want to sell them. We want to distribute them. And then they answered, no, volunteer work is not relevant for funding. And that was it. So we tried for weeks using all possible channels to make contact. And you could read on Twitter that the ministers really like our work and it should be supported. But in the, in the end, we didn't get one cent or a thank you. Uh, nothing, and that didn't really motivate us to apply for money at the city, uh, to the city. Thanks for the open works. Uh, the talk's topic is working together, and you're you're acting fast, also with the face shields. Was there something that you developed together? Or were there other makerspaces involved? Want to tell about that? I want to say, developed together? It's difficult to say because there were versions we exchanged, but in the end, here in Exxon, some people already started sewing masks from cloth. And then someone asked, yeah, I need someone in Be who, support, uh, yeah, who supports the doctors in Berlin with face shields. And half an hour later, we had the first print on the 3D printer. And then afterwards, <laughs> the development, not the face shields, but in cooperation with the Caros, we also brought in more face shields and face masks uh, and, and uh, cloth masks and distributed them. So we set up a network quite quickly, but we did not develop the face shields. Yeah, I also would say that especially the thing with the face shields, that was a real success story. How a few open workshops, uh, mostly in Brandenburg, and we have a network of, of, uh, of open workshops, and those spaces are really differing, different from each other, and they're well distributed, and together with Ixhain, uh, Karos, and uh, Beuth University in Berlin, we work together, and within five weeks, we went from a 3D, distributed 3D printing, we went to industrial um, pressure mold um, plastics, and we distributed a lot of those. After, at the end, I sent something to the Congo. So that was a great example how everyone in their free time within a pandemic, within lockdown, were able to create something together, what the market really couldn't do. So I think it's a great example for what becomes possible if a few people come together. I also think that's a great example for how acting together works and also how motivation works and how much faster and more creative it can be. And that needs to support. 
aber vielleicht and auch governmental oder politics and uh, funding habt ihr, habt ihr noch should Ideen, change. Also, and do you have further ideas und, um, all dies, that it could be more and longer? That's obvious. I was working for a foundation that had to do fundraising themselves. So I know the topic. And sometimes it makes sense for certain fundings to just start things. And that's necessary as well, of course. But on the other side, if there is something effective and something that works and when something like the, with the face shields where people come together and it works and you can help what would you wish for such projects for uh, political funding also for digital volunteering which is our topic here of course what do you think is necessary what's needed I would really want that this topic around digital projects in voluntary area gets on better and gets better acceptance and of course that it doesn't have to be justified anymore Freifunk for example is something where official sites understood that this can be non-profit and but public benefit and what we do in our free time here is also something so it's not just some obscure technical thing where people program something and do video conferencing or something that this becomes obvious that this really gets accepted as volunteer work and thus get the recognition of honorable work and on the other side it's a personal wish of mine that there's a, something like a voluntary digital year there is the social year there's the ecological year there is the uh, volunteer service of the state but we want something for people who have a technical affinity especially people between school and the rest of their lives if they want to do something that makes sense that we give them the option to do something more technical and I think that way we could create like an API but uh, like a a connection point to also get more digital competence and clubs that do something really different and don't really work with digitization but they do social work that we can um, work with them with volunteer work and give them technical competences that way and maybe they can manage to step into the future that way because how do we support them here every day we have the same situation or every week at least that some old uh, some club for old people need support for entering the cloud to just exchange photos and all other people have the same thing and a free a, a volunteer year for digital topics could work here yeah there was a pilot project to 2015 to 2020 but they tried something like that but the german red cross had a digital service but that's not what you are suggesting the new government has decided to make this stronger and written that down and we got a lot of applications where people really wanted small and little things and help for digital topics so what you are describing is really important from my perspective Felix what would you wish for for a support politics that's more future oriented and that would help you with what you're doing yeah of course supporting structure and structural funding would be great so it would be great then if you that you don't get money in december that has to be spent by the end of the year that would be good that we have more time and more less stress but especially for digital topics i would wish to involve more kids and teenagers 
So, I would like to stress that it's not just programming and computer work. There's also 3D printing, laser cutting, the digital arts. So, it's a mix of digital topics and almost handiwork and tradecraft. And that's something I really want for kids and teenagers as well, because I had tradecraft as a school subject and today I don't think that exists anymore and a lot of things get lost because in school you have no connection point with it and I would wish that we have a communal makerspace it, it's supported by the municipality also financially, also financially and it should be seen as an educational space and all students should spend some time there and you could learn woodworking and just take something in your hands and do something that you can't do at school and I don't think you could expect all the schools to build it up themselves because it's a lot of work to have a makerspace and to run a makerspace and yeah the teachers also are not especially for technology you have to stay up to date and you can't expect teachers who studied some other topic that they next to their job also learn about these topics so they can manage a club so a solid finance um, a solidly financed communal makerspace also for adults but with the focus on teenagers yeah that sounds good because this is not something an association can do alone but you need a lot of stakeholders so it's not just about having model projects funded by the federal government, but the communal districts also have to chip in. So what we do in communities is also we um, do counseling, especially with a focus on open source projects that um, are you very dependent on voluntary work and something I can recommend you too, I don't know if you do that, um, work together with volunteer organizations, especially Berlin has a lot of such organizations, or um, maybe tap into the community here and in order to search for volunteers. I don't know if you've ever worked with such structured, but if there's topics um, that are important to you, just contact us and we we will help you where we can, not just financially, but also with counseling. Now I would like to ask if there's any questions from the audience. Yeah, there is. There's one question. It was suggested that schools and other public organizations could give make, make spaces um, free rooms. Would that be a possibility and how would you approach that? Yeah, with the spatial situation, that's also not so good for schools in Berlin, but in some primary schools in Berlin it would be very difficult to find an a free space that isn't planned for use anywhere else. Well, Generally, I don't think this is a bad idea if there is free space or free room. Opening them up for people who have use for them would be a very good possibility to share the benefits. So, but as was said before, you can't really expect teachers to run make a space at school. Maybe you could get people to the schools and get them closer to the students. This is something I could imagine, but I'm not sure whether we live in a time where schools still have 
free space available, even out here in the countryside, that's rare. Yeah, it's a nice concept because it would open up the possibilities for students to do some of the organization and uh, themselves. Yeah, that sounds really good, and this would be a way to connect um, target groups that might be very appreciative. Yeah, I know that there's a lot of discussion about creating room for voluntary work because often networks don't aren't created even though there's a lot of interconnection in the village and a lot of exchange within villages, but still there's a lack of control centers or but there's a lot of bars in villages that are empty, that are not in use, and they could be turned into into communal spaces. This is an option we find very interesting in order to promote voluntary works in rural spaces. <laughs> I can recommend train stations. It's the perfect place in a lot of um, aspects. The German railways are selling a lot of those spaces right now, so that's a possibility. But Felix, don't cities also have orphan spaces or abandoned spaces like um, former shopping centers? Yes, but there aren't really used otherwise. So you have that kind of old rundown mall that no one is using. But if I just think of my surroundings, I have a lot of ideas about places that could be turned into maker spaces. I would really like to do that, but there's the problem that those buildings usually don't belong to the city. They're not the city's property, so you're in private uh, rentals, and that makes it very difficult. Yeah, so the spatial issue is a very big issue. Bigger would always be better. What I found interesting, Daniel, your biggest challenge is the distance, like that people must bridge to approach you. And Felix, for you, it's more the long term commitment. People um, being able to commit for giving a course maybe for half a year. And both of you could use people who are more into the administrative side and could help with filing applications and doing the paperwork. Maybe we have someone here in the audience who would be interested in doing that with you. Is there anything you would like to mention in terms of digital volunteering? cheering and uh, the next legislative period. I wanted to say that currently we have 200 open positions for volunteers, so if you're willing to do half a year or maybe a whole year in Fürstenberg and help us define our space, you're welcome to contact us and also during the next four years and the new legislative period, we have to have a close eye on the digital volunteering being strengthened and promoted and supported. So, yeah, we need to measure the new coalitions in terms of what they do for public and communal spaces, and I hope that their commitment is real. And that we might be on the ascending path instead of the descending.
and uh, maybe we can get out of this uh, valley of darkness we're in right now. Yeah, there's not a lot I can add. I, at the end of this legislative period, I would like to be able to speak more warmly about the Berlin administration. Thank you, both of you, very much for your commitment, your work for our society. And thank you for all of those who listened. If there's anything you want to know about volunteer work, we're happy to help you. Yeah, thank you for hosting this talk. It's really important, uh, your work also. So keep it on. It's really important. Und, äh, Thank you. Mir auch nur Danke All right. Zu sagen, euch allen dreien, dass ihr hier diesen wunderbaren Talk oder diese Now, wunderbare Diskussionsrunde bei uns gemacht habt. I can only say thank you to the three of you for having this wonderful discussion round.